Hello. This video will introduce the concept of interfacial tension. What is interfacial tension? Interfacial tension is the energy per unit area between two phases. So imagine between water and air or between oil and water. It can also be the energy per unit area between, say, a solid surface and a liquid. So it's the energy per unit area. It's given the symbol sigma normally, and this is of an interface. In the treatment in this video and our subsequent videos, we're really going to consider at most three phases. And for now, we're going to consider that those phases are either a liquid or a gas. You can also, as I've said, have an interfacial tension with a solid, but that will come later. So let's consider the three phases in general, and then I'll explain why we have an interfacial tension in the first place. So phase one is normally the densest phase or the denser phase, if we only have two. Um, and that is generally water. It doesn't have to be pure water, it can be salty water, something can be dissolved in it, but it will be an aqueous phase. Phase two will be of lower density. That could be an oil like decane, or it could be an oil that we encounter deep underground as a hydrocarbon, or it could be a gaseous phase, a gas. Phase three will be the least dense phase, and that phase will be a gaseous phase or supercritical gas if we're deep underground. So now let's illustrate why we have the interfacial tension in the first place. Well, imagine I've drawn here water and air. Now I'm going to zoom down to the molecular scale because that's uh, where the concept comes from. So for those of you who know a bit of chemistry, water molecules look a bit like Mickey Mouse. There's the oxygen, there's the hydrogen, H2O. The hydrogen tends to have a positive charge and the oxygen away from the hydrogens is negatively charged. So where is the next water molecule going to go? Well, it's going to sort of orient itself so that the Mickey Mouse ears, which are positive, are attracted to the negative parts here. And what we have here is hydrogen bonding. And this hydrogen bonding is what makes water quite a dense fluid. It's what gives it quite a high boiling point. So, of course, I could draw lots and lots of water molecules. And then you might say, well, what about the air? Well, air is mainly nitrogen, say. So nitrogen, however, is N2. The molecules themselves don't have any charge and it's very low density. So there's very little interactions here. Here is where the interactions are. So why is there an interfacial tension? Well, when I create an interface, what I've done is I've broken half the hydrogen bonding. Imagine your water molecule in bulk. You've got all the friendly water molecules around you with these hydrogen bonds. You create a surface, half of those are cut. So that's where the energy comes from. You've basically broken the hydrogen bonding. So you might say, okay, that's interesting. You can measure the interfacial tension. I'm not going to describe how, but it is, it is a standard measurement in physical chemistry. And at ambient conditions, this interfacial tension is about 70. Now, I'm going to write 70 watt I'm going to write this as millinewtons per meter. And the first thing is to say, no, no, no. If it's an energy per unit area, that should be in joules per meter squared. But newtons per meter is, in fact, the same unit. And why are we calling it a tension? So physically, although it is an energy per unit area, it's also, with a liquid, a real tension in that the surface of the water is like a stretched sheet Right, that you have to hold apart, because if you think about the individual molecules, if I have a molecule, say, here, right, it can have a hydrogen bond this way that will pull it down into the liquid, but nothing this way. 
So the tendency for the individual molecules is always to want to move down. You have to keep stretching this interface to maintain it. So that's why interfacial tension is indeed a genuine tension, and it is given the units of newtons per meter, which is a force per unit length. The next thing I wanted to mention is many people confuse interfacial tension with surface tension. Surface tension is a specific form of interfacial tension. The surface tension is the energy per unit area of an interface between a substance, say a liquid, and its vapour. So it's a specific, well-defined example and it's something that can be precisely measured. However, for the purposes of our flow in porous media, where we're deep underground with lots of things going on, we're going to have two very distinct phases. We're going to have water and supercritical CO2, or we're going to have oil and supercritical CO2 and brine. So we're not really interested in surface tension, we're interested in interfacial tension. So now that's between water and a gas. Now let's consider some other combinations. So this was phase one, and this was phase three. Using this definition, I'm going to be interested now between oil and gas and between oil and water. So let's do the oil and gas first. So instead of green, I'll give that a pink, so we'll put it up here. So this is phase two, which is going to be oil-like, and then we've got phase three that is gas-like above it. Okay, so let's think of oil. That's a hydrocarbon. So I'm going to draw my hydrocarbon chain like this. This represents a carbon atom, and then there'll be hydrogen coming off it, and it has this sort of zigzag shape at the molecular scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that will be octane. And then we got another one here and another one here. Now, hydrocarbons do not have any dipole. There's not some sort of attraction between positive and negative, but you do still have intermolecular forces. What are those intermolecular forces? They're van der Waals. Van der Waals forces are due to fluctuations essentially in the electron cloud. So if there's an excess of electrons, say, here, then there can be a deficit here, and there can be some fluctuating attraction between the uh, molecules. And basically, it's about kT per molecule is the strength. K is the Boltzmann constant. T is the absolute temperature. Now, these interactions are much, much weaker. So if we break half of the van der Waals forces, it's about kT per molecule, and you can sort of go through the mathematics and estimate it. It's not a really very precise calculation, but it is, as I said, something you can measure. This is going to be much lower than that 70 millinewtons per meter. And at ambient conditions, typically the interfacial tension between a hydrocarbon, say decane, and air is about 20 millinewtons per meter. Okay, now let's do the um, last example, which will be between oil and water. So uh, we're going to do it down here. Here's the water with our sort of Mickey Mouse, right? So I'll do that quickly. So that's phase one. And then we have phase two, which is our oil like this. Okay. What's that interfacial tension? Well, that interfacial tension turns out is 50 millinewtons per meter approximately when it's measured. Now you might say, okay, fair enough, measure it. It is what it is. But there's something interesting here and something very significant is gonna turn out when we have all three phases together in a, the pore space, which we do often deep underground where we're storing CO2 in a depleted oil field. This number is equal to this one plus this one. Yeah. 
that's not a coincidence. So we'll end the video just by explaining in a pretty hand-waving way why that's the case. Well, why is it? Well, let's consider this oil-water interface. When you've done this, you've broken the hydrogen bonding for the water. So there's an energy penalty of 70 millinewtons per metre. But now you've got two dense phases next to each other. And although the water can't interact with the oil with hydrogen bonding, there's still van der Waals forces. And that's a positive in the sense of a lower energy contribution, in the sense that it makes it favourable. So you break the water, penalty of 70, but you gain the van der Waals forces, you get 20 back. And 70 is 50 plus 20, or 50 is 70 minus 20. So what you find for hydrocarbons, so a sort of inert liquid, with a gas and with water, that approximately the interfacial tension between the water and the gas is equal to the interfacial tension between the oil and the water and between the oil and the gaseous phase. Okay, that's all I really needed to say. I hope you've got the concept and I hope you've got the SI units and then we'll use that concept to put these fluids inside a porous medium in the subsequent videos. Thank you very much.